Chapter 9 by Michael Peacom. They had driven off to New Rochelle to play Westchester South, the team they had thought of as Justin's now, and an old blue bus from the school bus company near the 3rd Avenue Bridge that Mr. Mignana managed in what he called his day job. Manny joked with Mr. Mignana that the shock absorbers from this particular bus seemed to have turned into shock producers. But the kids loved the old bus, anyways, loved the idea of any kind of road trip out to the Bronx, just because it made them feel big. The field in New Rochelle turned out to be beautiful. The infield and outfield grass looking as if they were being cared for by the big league groundskeeper, like Kel's dad. Even in the infield dirt had been raked before they got there. There were colorful ads for local stores on the outfield walls that looked pretty close to Michael. Pitchers always noticed and a concession truck set up in the parking lot behind home plate, and even new-looking bleachers on both sides of the field for the home team and the visitors, not that the Clippers ever had many pirates who made road trips. Michael even noticed what looked like a small green press box set up on the Westchester south side of the field, even though he couldn't imagine what kind of press would want to be covering their game. Maybe the public address announcer sat up there, they had heard somebody testing a microphone, a voice coming from an unseen speaker, and they filled out of the bus. When he heard the voice coming from the speakers, Manny immediately turned himself into the Yankees PA announcer, the one who sounded like the voice of God. Now coming into the pitch for the Clippers, Manny said, making his voice even deeper than Anthony's. Michael Arrow, number 33, pause, Arrow, Michael said. I'm not sure that's exactly how he does it, the Yankee guy. Close enough, Manny said. Michael said, I still think it needs work. I sound exactly like him, you know it, Manny said. Jealousy does not become you, Star. I'm just saying, or telling you that as a friend. I try to keep it under control, Michael said. Justin the Jerk started for Westchester South. As far as Michael and the guys could tell, he spent more time before the game staring Michael down than warming up. After they had just finished taking infield and outfield practice and were back at the bench, Anthony Farrell came up to Michael. Anthony could be just as funny as Manny. He just didn't try as hard, or as often. Funny boy seemed to think this is the finals of the Olympic stare down event, Anthony said. Anthony was about the same shape as Justin, a little shorter than Michael, but heavier and solid. One time in a game, there had been a grounder to Anthony at first, and Michael thought he had to get off the mound and cover first base. Only at the last second, Anthony decided to sprint for the base himself. They arrived at the same moment. Michael couldn't get out of the way, and the two of them collided. Michael ended up about halfway to the home team bench at McComb. The star, Manny said to him later, seeing stars. Anthony, Michael knew, wasn't afraid of anybody or anything. That guy's a punk. You can just see it, he said. All I did was strike him out, Michael said. Cal said, seems like the boys still got some issues going for him on that there. Just was staring, Justin was staring at them from the mound now, while his team took infield practice. Cal stepped forward, gave the kid what he called his bug guy, buggy look, eyes all wide giving a little shake to his head as he did. Cal and Michael said, you got a lead off tonight, and he's got the ball. Manny said, yeah, but you've got it later. They went out and sat down next to Manny on the bench, giving him room because he was doing what he did before every game, neatly laying out his equipment, masks, chest protectors, skin guards. Manny called them his instruments. Anthony nodded at his instruments now. You know what they really call a catcher stuff? Manny was fiddling with the straps with his shun god. What? The tools of ignorance, Anthony said, then put his hands up, as if inviting high fives from the group. I'm not even dignifying your ignorance with a comment, Manny said. You're a tool of ignorance. I got a laugh out of everybody. From the mound, they heard old Justin say, That's so funny. Manny, who couldn't keep a thought inside his head sometimes, said, You are Skippy. The guy bit. My name's not Skippy. Kel stood up, stared out at him, but you look exactly like a Skippy, no lie. Why don't you come out here and say that, Justin said, gesturing from what looked like pretty expensive gloves. Anthony stood up now, stepped in front of Kel. Hey, dude, why 
Why don't you take a chill pill? Then Mr. Minya appeared as of, out of nowhere and shooed them all back on the bench, reminding them about the team room. No trash talk, ever, under any circumstance. No matter how much trash the other side was talking at them. Now quiet down, he said. As usual, Manny thought, quiet down. Applied to everybody on the team except him. Well, as my mom likes to say, he said, this should certainly be a festive occasion. Little did they know.